Hello, in this video I want to talk about um, a problem that I encountered in my day job. The problem might sound very simple, <coughs> but it turns out it's more complicated. It's not too complicated, but it's more complicated than I thought, and I learned a lot during the process. I think I should share all the knowledge with you. So the problem is this. You're working with PySpark. You're working on big data probably <coughs> a few gigabytes, 10 gigabytes, 20, 50, 90 gigabytes. You're working on a Linux system, a virtual machine somewhere, but it's still a single machine. It's not a cluster. And you're using PySpark. You use PySpark to do some you know, data pipeline stuff, cleaning data, running some um, EDA. And then you want to write the output of the process to disk. So now you might um, Google, look at the PySpark docs, or you know just just Google how to write to CSV using PySpark, and then you will see something that looks like this, and then you will run it. But you want the data to be saved as a single CSV instead of multiple. So you run this. You take a look at the output, but you see a folder. You're like, what? Didn't I say the output should be cleaned underscore data dot CSV, but in the, it turns out that you are getting a folder. And once you open the folder, you see many parts. Hmm, strange. Each part is a CSV, and then there is this success file, which you don't know what the heck is this, right? You have no idea. But you kind of know, okay, so it's trying to save one file as eight parts. Well, why is that? I want a single file. So we are going to talk about the solution. We're going to talk about how to generate one single CSV, but I want to first um, talk about why PySpark is saving this as multiple parts. The reason is that um, when the data when data is huge, right? When data is huge, it will be more it will be faster and it will be um yeah, it will mostly just be faster when you read or write to multiple files. That makes sense. Right? Cuz if it's a single file when you are downloading say a single file um, that will take a lot of time, but if you're downloading multiple smaller files at the same time, that will be faster. So that's why um, um, a lot of other bigger big data platforms, they also adopt um, this approach, right? When, <clears throat> when trying to represent big data, they, are tr they will create a folder and then they will save the data set as multiple parts. And these parts can be partitioned by some, um, it can pa be partitioned in, in, in the ways you want, but here I'm just letting PySpark decide the partition. So I don't know how it's partitioning the data. Um, that's all right. But still, I want a single data set as output. Well, how do I do that? You ask Google, and then you will find maybe uh, answers like this, which contains a lot of stuff, which I recommend people to read. But um, in these days, I guess most people will just see this, they will, they will see this, and then they will copy paste. Fewer, pe fewer people will see this note. And I think the most important thing here is a note. You're going to have memory issues if you do this. Well, why is that? Let's try to understand that. So let me open up the terminal and let me just show you HTOP. HTOP is basically a task manager. It looks at the, your memory. We are currently using 5.6 gigabytes out of 15 gigabytes. And on this machine, there are six cores. Let's rerun this again and see what's happening 
in our machine. Well, all the cores are working at full capacity, and now it's down. But let's see what's going to happen when we run coalesce first, and then write to disk. Well, for most of the time, it seems like one core is working, but other, other cores are just chilling there for some reason. And the same is going to happen for a repartition. Um, here it's actually using all cores to repartition. And after that, after that, it's just, after that, like a lot of cores are just retiring. They're not doing anything anymore. Well, why is that? So I believe it turns out that PySpark internally will represent a data frame also as many parts. And that's, and that's also why it's more advantageous for PySpark to write um, data frames to parts instead of a single file. Now, okay, you asked the question. No, no, no. you're not asking anything. Okay. Now you're asking PySpark to coalesce the parts into one. What's going to happen? Well, first raw data is turned into data structures, and then the data structures are collected into PySpark data frames. When you're coalescing, essentially you are copying and pasting parts and put them together as one big part. So what are some problems? The first problem is that during the process, you are copying and pasting smaller parts. And these parts are parts of the data frame. And you, it's not parts of the raw data, right? Raw data can be 5 megabytes. But once the raw data is read into memory, it's probably going to be 10 gigabytes because raw data is turned into data structures. That will use more memory. So you're copying smaller parts of the data frame a lot and then you're putting them together into one big data frame one big part so that's going to cause memory issues and because now there is only one part inside the PySpark data frame you are forced to only use one core to process it so you lose parallelism that's why um, coalesce and repartition are slow. Now, in this case, the data I have here is only about um, 500 megabytes. But these two methods are already taking about twice the time as the most simple write. So, this is probably not what you want, right? You're working with big data already. Your machine has maybe 100 some gigabytes of data. You, the data you're working with is probably 10, 20 gigabytes of size. You don't want to copy that data in memory. That's going to slow the entire process down. That's going to give you memory errors. And in the end, you still get a folder. It's just that in the folder, there's one part. You still have to clean this up, rename some files. You still have to do some work. So these two methods are actually, in my opinion, almost never the solution to the problem. Almost never the solution to the problem. So what should you do then? Well, here we are going to learn some Linux commands, Linux kernel commands, which are pretty basic, but um, I don't know. I, I never learned this until working on this problem, until working with big, until I joined the, my current company. I never learned, before that, I never learned this. <laughs> so in Linux, what you can do is um, you can actually move the content of other files by move, I mean copy. You can actually, there's a command that copies the content of 
some files to a target file. So first let's um, navigate to CD output. Take a look. Um, so here we only have one part. So actually, um, because since we already decided that we are not going to use coalesce or repartition, we're not going to use these two methods because they have memory problems and because they are slow. So we're going to use this. I'm going to first write as multiple parts. Right. So this doesn't involve any copying because it's just working on the original parts and it's it can be very well parallelized. So now if we go if I go into CD clean data, I'll see eight parts. Cool. So I want a file here which is called data.csv. And you can create a file in Linux by calling the cat command and put this um, bigger symbol here and then name the file here. And once you press enter, just don't do anything and then put control C. Nothing's going to happen. Now you have this data.csv file on disk. The next step is to use another functionality of the cat command. So it turns out the cat command can also copy the content of other files into a target file. So I think people call this append or concatenate. So the syntax is pretty simple, cat. And then here, if I want to copy, say, 123.csv, if I know exactly the file name is called 123.csv, I can do, do this. But if I want to do um, a, like a list of CSVs, right? Here I want to say, I want to copy all the contents of the CSV files inside this folder. Right, this is what you're going to put. You're going to put an asterisk, which is the same as regular expressions. You're going to move. You're going to copy all this content into data.csv. And remember, so this is the append. So it's going to automatically generate a new line if there is a previous line. It's going to automatically generate a new line. But if there is no previous, no, if it, yeah, if data.csv is empty, it's just going to copy everything. Yeah, it's going to just going to copy everything into this file. And let's run this. Boom. It takes less than a second, less than half a second, and you're done. Let's com let me convince you that is you're done. Let's do head.csv and then you see a lot of data. Head by default will print, I believe, the first ten rows. Oh, oops, clear. So let me just repeat this process one more time. Um, let me remove data.csv. Right, so let me recreate this file. And then, yeah, control C. I don't need to type anything there. And then I do head.csv. Originally, there's nothing. Head prints nothing. And then we do this concat again. Now we do head.csv again, we see the data. So it's actually moving all the contents from all CSV files inside this folder into data.csv. Now you ask the question, okay, it's still copying the data, right? Yes. But why is it faster? And why is this more memory efficient? Well, it's faster because this Linux kernel code is the most optimized code out there. Retain C is being optimized and worked on for way more than 20 years. And it's working with raw data. It's working with, in total, there are just 500 megabytes of data. That's all the data it's trying to move. Right? In your work case, maybe there are a few gigabytes, maybe there are tens of gigabytes of data, but because you're already working with that amount of data. You probably have a virtual machine that can that has a hundred gigabytes of memory. So ten gigabytes of say raw data 
you want to copy that over that's totally reasonable what is not reasonable however is that I copy so I read the 10 gigabytes of data into memory and then copying small parts of it right after the read you already it's it will probably already take 30 gigabytes of memory and, you're, and then you're copying and pasting parts of that 30 gigabytes right that's what that's why that's exactly why we don't want to repartition we in this case we don't want to repartition just for this we we do repartitions for other reasons we don't want to do repartition just to write the output as a single CSV and that's why in my opinion right this website does does a very disservice to a lot of people I introduced some very bad code but for some reason it just shows up here as a first answer anyway so how do we automate this whole process right remember we, we just did some command line stuff but in, you know in Python you can also send command line commands you can also send commands to the system in Python how are you going to do that well it's actually pretty simple so f first we create a file well earlier if I do um, head.data.csv actually here we are missing something we are missing the column names so that's because earlier we created an empty file now let's create a file but we write the column names to the file and then we append right this is how we create a file with the column names and then we just do the regular write which will create a folder and then we go into the folder find all the CSVs and then we move the content we copy the content and in the end depending on your business requirement you may or may not want to remove the data okay let me just clear this up and then open htop um, before I run this let me remove everything that's here all right and now you see we are of course we are still using all the sy systems cores and it's done in six point it's done just it takes slightly more time than this call much faster than the rest it, it will it will take more time right because we are still copying some data and we are doing more stuff than just write but this is reasonable and this most in most cases this is not going to throw you memory errors as I explained earlier right here we are not copy and pasting parts and here once we are here we are just um, moving the raw data which is much smaller than actual data frame parts of data frames much smaller and let's take a look we do have one file and everything is cleaned up all right Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And see you in the next see you in the next one. Bye.